Welcome to a Lovely Yarn Podcast. My name is Amber. Today is Monday, February 27th, and I am filming today from our home, as I film every time, <laughs> in Western Pennsylvania. If you're new here, uh, welcome. Welcome to all my returning viewers as well. And if this is your first time here, I, I just want to say real quick, uh, as I said, my name is Amber. I am a 40-something knitter, crocheter, spinner, homemaker, finishing up uh, my years of homeschooling as my youngest is graduating this year from high school. And um, we live here in Western Pennsylvania. I have three children. One of them is already married and out on his own. And then um, my other two, one is in college. And then, as I said, my, my youngest is my daughter, Lily, who many of you, if you've watched for a while, um, you know Lily, but she is the one that's finishing up her senior year of high school. So yes, that is uh, me in a nutshell. My family is very important to me, and I also love to spend a lot of my free time knitting and crafting. So yes, I think it's been a couple of weeks since I filmed last, and I wanted to get in a February episode. I guess I would have... I did film in February already, but I wanted to get in a second episode because I want to share with you my blocks from the... Um, blanket knit along that I'm doing with uh, Jimmy Bean's wool. So I will do that here a little bit later. But um, I, I think this might be a shorter episode. I don't really know. I, I have a ton of projects that I'm working on, or at least it feels that way to me. But I don't have any finished objects because I cast it on multiple projects and I've just been Several of them are bigger projects, and I've just been working through those, and then I have a couple of smaller projects. So I don't have any finished objects to show you today, but I have lots of whips, and then a couple of... Here I go. <laughs> I should be completely focused on finishing what I already have started, but I also have a couple of knits that I would like to cast on very soon that I will talk about towards the end of the episode. But I'm going to start with what I'm wearing. I'm not, real, I'm not wearing any knitted sweaters because it is sunny out today and I think it's supposed to be in the 50s. I have my window cracked. It's not, it's definitely not warm enough to go outside without a coat, but I have been baking bread all morning so my oven has been running and so our house is warm and I just could not even bear the thought to put a sweater on. So I just put on this denim shirt and then I have on my, um, I knitted this last last summer. It's the Summer Camp Kerchief by Designs by So-and-So. And this was the second one that I had knit. The first one I didn't care for because the yarn I chose um, was just a little bit too too much, too big of a, or too heavy of a weight for the pattern for how I wanted to use it. But uh, this is knit out of Knitting for Olive Pure Silk in the putty colorway. And, um, I will, t I'm not going to take this off now because I already have it on for the day, but I will do a clip of just showing you what it, this looks like when it's not a, wrapped around my neck, but I basically just have it wrapped around and tied underneath. So it's just giving a little bit of warmth up here, um, but not suffocating me. And I absolutely loved this pattern and I absolutely loved this knitting for all of pure silk. In fact, I want to buy um, an, just another one skein of it and make another one of these in some sort of bright color just to have one. I love this because this putty color is so versatile and it goes with so many different things, but I would love to have like a bright one to just add a, an unexpected pop of color. So I want to get on and look at their... Um, the colors that they have in this. Now this was sent to me, this skein of yarn was sent to me, but I'm pretty sure that I can get, um, I think I can order this maybe even through Wool and Company, which I like that online yarn service here in the United States because it's free shipping. I have to look into that though, but I do plan on knitting another one of these. I really like this pattern. I, it's a great pattern and it, there's various, I think it's been a while since I've looked at the pattern, but there's multiple variations that you can do. And, um, as far as like the eyelet rows and stuff. So yeah, that's another really nice thing about it. It's versatile. Okay. So as I said, I don't have any finished objects, so I'm just going to get started into my whips. And I, the first one I'm going to show you, um, actually is almost finished. 
which is good because these were the socks that I knit in exchange for the Instant Pot, <laughs> which I talked about last week. So I'm doing an exchange with a friend that I know locally, um, an acquaintance who has an Instant Pot that she was not using and I was in the market for an Instant Pot. So uh, we decided to do an exchange. Um, I baked her sourdough bread and I'm giving her a pair of hand knit socks as well as a bottle of homemade vanilla extract in exchange for her um, pretty much new Instant Pot. So, which I love my Instant Pot, just, just so you know, like I, I'm not a fad I'm not like a jump on the fad wagon <laughs> person. I don't like fads, okay? So I, I, that's just how I am. You guys know that if you've been here, you know how I am with certain knitting patterns that are really popular. That makes me not want to knit them, at least for a while. So I did not consider an Instant Pot to be something I wanted to have in my kitchen because I thought I don't want just another fad kitchen gadget but it is amazing. It is amazing. The things you can do in your Instant Pot are, it's just amazing. So I am, I've used it almost every day since I've gotten it and I'm just so, it was so worth the trade. So let me show you the socks. Um, this one, I just need, this is the first one and I just need to bind off the toe. So yeah, just need to do that. And then I have my second one here, which is almost done. I just, I got to the point yesterday, I was working on these <clears throat> while in church and I got to the point where I needed to trade off the circular needles for my double pointed because it was getting too short to be able to like knit, knit around. Um, and then I did, but I didn't have enough because I still had these and I don't want to do, um, I don't want to bind off I don't, I just, I didn't have enough needles with me yesterday. I didn't have the appropriate needles with me yesterday, so I just stopped. But anyway, this will be quick to finish. I'll have these finished up here with, you know, I mean, I just need to sit down and do it. So probably tonight, finish these up. I love this yarn so much. I talked about this on my last episode. I just love it so, so much. It's beautiful. Um, this is what I have left. I haven't weighed it. I can get a pair of shorties out of this, I'm pretty certain. And so you know, and oh, with like with everything, I will put in the description box down below the details of everything. But this is the yarn that I'm using. It's an opal yarn. You can just take a look at that. For those of you who do not have easy access to the description box, because you know, when you're watching on your TV, it's not as easy as I do most of my podcast viewing on my phone. So I always forget about that. Um, when it's on, when I'm watching on my TV, it's just harder to access like the description and all of that. So there you go. Um, that is all I'm going to talk about with these because they're almost done. I just, I really love this yarn. It's very, I can tell it's going to be a very sturdy, well-wearing yarn. I have used Opal before. I like these German commercial yarns for socks. I feel like they're really sturdy and durable. Okay, so let's move on to my Vertices Unite shawl, which I feel like it's not even going to look any different than when I showed it to you guys last, but it has grown. Um, it, I was so excited to cast this on. This is my second one. My first one is um, in the possession of my, my daughter now because she loves it so much. So I cast it on another one to have for myself. And I'm doing, I am knitting the larger size because this pattern, for this pattern, you can knit two different sizes of shawls. And, um, yeah. And actually now he just updated, Stephen West is the designer of this. He just updated the pattern to include a swatch shawl. So you can actually knit a very small version of this just to get an idea of what your colors are going to look when you combine them all. Because this is a modular shawl, so it's knit in pieces and you build, so you, you build on each piece that you've previously knitted and it's knit with different colors. And when I knit my first one, I, I followed, I kind of just did my own thing with color combining and stuff, which is what I plan on doing with this one. And so I didn't make a swatch because I just wanted to start and I didn't feel like that was necessary for me, but I can see how that would be a really helpful thing to do. So this is what I have. I feel like I don't have much more than last time, but 
for some reason, this is just taking a really long time for me to get through. I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, that this is the biggest section of the shawl. Um, so like I have to, because I'm knitting the largest, I will be increasing till I have 90 stitches on my needles and I'm currently at 60 some, like the low 60s. So I still have a while to go before, um, I think then I start decreasing. I don't remember cause it's been a couple of years since I knit this pattern. I, I typically, if I'm knitting a pattern for the first time, I will try to skim through the whole thing. That is, I've learned the hard way that that is the best thing to do. Like when you buy a new pattern that you've never knit before, it's best to read down through the whole thing because it's just, you're less likely to make potential mistakes. But for patterns that I've already knitted, I just start. I forget things about them, but I just start. So this is knitting. I'm using like a green color from Flower Hill Fleeces. This was a one of a kind color. And then the alternative like the white color with the speckles is oh gosh what is it I don't have yes I do have the tag it's cozy color works fingering weight in Jersey peach and this is knit in a fingering weight yarn which is another reason that it's probably taking a while but it's knit on size six needles I think is this six or this might be five this might be size five I can't read I cannot read that I think that the like the marking on my needles has rubbed off so that I can no longer see the size. I kind of don't like that. <laughs> they make needle gauges, you know, like the little, and in fact, I have one. I have this really cute one here. It's like a little Matryoshka doll. I have this, but I find that these vary, like the sizing varies. I don't find them to be completely accurate. So I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you find these things to be accurate? I mean, it's super cute and it will be helpful if, if it comes like, I really don't think I can read this unless I'm just missing it because the way the light's reflecting in the window, it doesn't really matter. I think these are a five or I'm pretty sure there are five. I think my six is like a red color and these are like interchangeable needles. I think they're nitpicks. No, they're not nitpicks. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. I've had them for years. Okay. So this is all I've got. I pulled out some other yarns, uh, just to look at some potential combinations with color. I, I think I might use that this one somewhere in there. This is Ren house yarns. I have had this for years and years and years. Like I'm talking, this is one of the first skeins of yarn that I ever bought as a new knitter. And I don't even know, I don't think Ren house yarns is even dying anymore. She is local-ish to me at least she used to be and she's not really present on social media anymore and then I also bought this skein no this was the one I thought I was going to use yeah this is her that was her tag and um these are both of these are superwash merino this is still magnolia this is the one yes this is the one I thought about combining with this and then I also liked this color, which is by the Autumn Acorn, and I forget what it's called, Sarah's, Sarah Smile. It's naturally dyed with indigo. So I'm thinking about combining that, and then I have um, maybe this. <laughs> so this is maybe what I'm gonna do. See, this is how I'm working. This is what makes this shawl fun. I just need to get past this really big section here so that I can start playing with more color because I'm kind of I'm kind of bored of the green and um, the green and white I don't know yeah it's okay I'm gonna persevere through it because I feel like overall I'm pretty good at persevering through boring knit projects um, because especially if I really want the item that I'm gonna end with you know if it's I will not, I'm not against ripping out if I think that that project is no longer something that I'll wear or, you know, I'm not against that. But if I think, oh, I really want the end product, I'm going to persevere through it. So yes, that is the plan with that. Haven't gotten very far along, but we're moving forward. A little bit of progress. I try to work on it uh, at least a few rows every day. And the good thing about that shawl is that it is good, easy knitting that 
it's just like one increase every four rows. So I can do it out. I can work on it. I don't have to concentrate on it. It's like sock knitting for me basically is what I'm trying to say. Okay, let's talk about my Mariana sweater really quickly because I talked about this in the last episode and you guys really chimed in and encouraged me and the majority of you said, do not rip that sweater out. <laughs> so I, I'm not ripping it out. I am not. I'm leaving it. But what I did do is I pulled out the sleeve that I had knitted and I cast it on with a bigger needle and it's, it looks so much better. And I'm not going to decrease it all in this sleeve until I get down to the wrist. Then I'm going to do a quick decrease and then I'll have a little bit of a, like a puffy sleeve or a balloon sleeve, but not, not really because there, it's not going to be real balloonish because I don't feel like this is a very wide arm. Um, when I, in my last episode, I showed you guys, I was decreasing per pattern and it was just getting really small. So this is going to be better. Like you, I can already tell just by looking and none of this has been blocked yet. So this is going to definitely be better. It's going to be a beautiful sweater. I just, yeah, I'm going to stick with it and I, I have it all done. I have it all done except for these sleeves. I just need to persevere. And the one thing that slow is slowing me down right now is that, well, I'm going to show you because I, oh, th well, real quick. This is by Folk City Fiber Studios, this pattern. And the yarn is, I'll put it down below. I don't even know that you can get the yarn anymore because this was a cloud born and it's been discontinued, I'm pretty certain. And then this is a Barrett Wool Co. Woolens in Old Fashioned, held double with a silk mohair from Cozy Cozy Yarn Co. Okay, but I, again, I'll put all that down below. So <laughs> the reason I stopped working on these sleeves is because I got a little distracted and I cast on another sweater. This next project was a complete comfort. It's a complete comfort knit. I needed comfort. I've been dealing with some health issues, which I will do a little update, but I'm trying not to think about it too much. I'll do a little update at the end, but I've been dealing with some health issues that have had me a little bit anxious. Well, no, I'm not, okay, a lot anxious. I've been having, some days are better than others. Um, I just needed a comfort knit that I could, that I've knit before and I, didn't need to think too much. Can any of you guess? Any of my longtime viewers, can you guess? It's not the ranunculus. I know I've knit a lot of those. This is another pattern I've knit a lot of. Okay, I'm just gonna tell you. Well, maybe I'm gonna show you the yarn first. I've been knitting it with this fun yarn, which is new to me, and this. Oh, <laughs> it just decides to fall apart. I need to wind another skein up. Okay. I am making another Felix pullover and this is a design by Amy Christopher's and it's a comfort knit because I've knit, this is my third pullover and then I also knit the cardigan version and I just love the simplicity of this pattern and I also love, I just, um, it just, it feels familiar. Oh, look how pretty. Okay. Look up close guys. Look at this. So. How is this happening? Oh, there, there are the eyelet details along the raglan, which is, which is the big, the, the thing I love about this sweater. One of the things I love is it's so simple and it's such an easy knit and it's knit on 10 us 10 needles and it's knit with like a, a heavier weight yarn. So it goes so fast. Um, but then it has these beautiful little eyelets along the raglan. Okay, so this pink colored yarn is called Heatherly. And it's by Knit Picks. It's a worsted weight. What is the color? It's 80% acrylic and 20% merino wool. And, oh, teddy bear is the color of this. And this color by itself is very pretty. But I was like, I need, I don't want to just do it in this. So I had been, I can't remember who I watched recently. I know that the gals from Aspas Trico have carried this yarn. Let me grab it with the label on. 
they carry this yarn in their store. But for me to get something shipped here from Canada is super expensive. So I was able to find this online. I will at a like a small small shop. So I will put this down below if you guys are interested in knitting with this. It is an extremely thin yarn and it has nubs in it. And it's all different colors, although you can get this in just like more of greens as well as one that, that's all pinks, but I wanted the multicolored because that just sounded like fun and you know it's winter, I like color in the winter. And so by combining these two yarns, I'm just getting this really fun, tweedy looking sweater and I love it. And it's not too over the top with color, but it's enough to look like interesting and I think it would look fantastic with a gray yarn and I almost second guessed myself and I almost thought, oh, I have gray yarn. I should knit it with that. But then I'm like, no, just knit it in this and you can, you can order more if you need more and you can knit another one in the gray with this. I think this would look so good with gray. Um, and this, I cannot remember what I paid for this. $10 maybe for the skein. Maybe it wasn't even that much, but there's 450. 445 meters in one skein of this and it's viscose acrylic and polyamide so it's not really a natural fiber but it's fun it makes it makes your knitting fun um yeah so I just have this much left of my first skein and then I'm going to be I need to I pulled this actually so I can wind up the next skein and now it's just falling apart and making a mess but yeah, super fun. I'm knitting the size two, which I think gets, gives you a 43 and a half inch bust when you're finished. That's the size that fits me the best. The first time I knit the sweater, I knit it in a size one, which is a, I think a 39 inch fitted bust, but it's, it fits me, but it's a little, it's a little bit tighter than it's not tight, but it's just because I wear it over. I knit that one cropped and I wear it over sh other shirts. I wanted to have, I didn't, it, I just decided that in the future, if I would knit that sweater again, I would knit it in a size two, which is what I've done now. Um, I'm trying to think if anything, if I wanted to tell you anything else about it. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I'm just, I just divided for the sleeves yesterday. So now I'm working on the body and, and that'll go really fast. I don't plan on making this cropped. I want this to be a comfy, just easy wearing. It's a, it's mostly acrylic. So it'll be one. I don't know though that this is, I think this might be hand wash now that I think about it. It is hand wash dry flat, which is fine because that's what I do with my hand knit stuff anyway. Yes. Pure comfort knit. Loving it so much. Even though the Felix pullover is mostly just knitting stitches. Like it's, there's not a lot of variety in your knitting. I just don't typically get bored with it. Like I do other sweaters and I don't know why that is. I, maybe it's because it's, when you knit it, you use a, um, fairly large gauge needle and heavier weight yarn. So it goes fast. Like maybe it goes a little bit too fast for you to get bored with it. Oh, I will say that the pattern calls for a size 10 needle, but I am knitting it on a size nine because I've, that's how I always knit it. So yes, if you have not knit the Felix pullover, I highly suggest that you give it a try if you've been thinking about it because it is a very lovely knit and it's easy. Uh, it does have it does have short row shaping in the back, which I personally like, has it right below the neckline. And yeah, I think that's all. I don't have anything else to say about that, but it was a completely unexpected cast on because when I talked to you guys last, I told you I was going to be casting on the, uh, Sonder sweater by the petite knitter. And I had already wound up my yarn. And I talked about that last week and I said, I'm going to do my swatch today. <laughs> I have not swatched yet. I just needed something that I could just cast on, not do a swatch, like a gauge swatch, just get started on it and start to see like some sort of result. And so that's why I just, I casted that on. That is all that I have for, um, finished objects. I honestly feel like I'm forgetting something like I have a project 
somewhere that I wanted to show you and I'm not thinking of it today, but I don't know where or what that would be. <laughs> so I think it's just me being a little bit scatterbrained. Uh, but I do want to show you a couple of patterns, two patterns to be exact, that I would, that I plan on knitting this spring. And um, I'm going to show you, I need to grab the yarn because I have the yarn for one of the patterns. So I want to grab the yarn and then I will show you those patterns. Okay, I'm back with the yarn, but I just realized I never showed you my February squares. That is what <laughs> I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you my February squares for the knit along for Jimmy Bean's wool. And I do want to just put a disclaimer out there that Jimmy Bean's wool is sponsoring this video in a way because they sent me the yarn for free and they are, they've been, I've just been working with them for the last two months. Uh, this will be the third month, just helping them to promote their blanket club, but I'm having a lot of fun knitting it. And, um, I plan on, I, I love it because it's so doable because you're knitting two big, so far it's been two big squares and two small squares each month. So it doesn't feel overwhelming and it, the, they've been fun patterns. So let me show you. Okay, here we go. I left the little squares out in the living room, but I'm going to show you the big squares and the little squares. I will just maybe pop a picture in because they're just, um, they're, they're like super tiny. They're like three inch squares, but let me show you these. So here's the first one. It's like a basket weave. Isn't that pretty? And this yarn color for this month for February is called Sandstorm. I think. Yep. Sandstorm. And, um, and then the second square is another fun one. And it is just a bunch of bobbles. <laughs> And then the two small squares, I will pop a picture of here or a video or something so you can see what they are. But basically for those, uh, when I had knit the January small squares, you don't bind the, you don't bind them off. You like put them on scrap yarn. And then when you add the February, you just pick up those stitches, the live stitches, and you knit the February square right on to the January. So I'm assuming that's what's going to happen next month too. But, uh, these were, yeah, these were fun to make. I will say I love the look of those baubles. They're so playful and cute, but I'm not the hugest fan of knitting baubles. I never have been. Crocheting baubles is easy and fast and not, and it's not, it's not that knitting baubles is not easy. It's, it's not that at all. It's just, to me, it feels fiddly. So this was fine knitting a square of baubles, but I don't see myself ever knitting a sweater full of baubles. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Yeah. So that's, that is my, um, those are my blanket squares for the February club of Jimmy beans wool. Also, I want to just say again, in case you're watching this for the first time, how this works is it's a club that you sign up for. And every month you, I think you can pay, you can pay at one time or you can pay monthly and every month they send you the pattern portion for that month for those particular squares and then they send you the skein of yarn that you need it's all Madeline Tosh it's a special uh, blanket blend that they had made specifically for the blanket make along and you yeah you just knit your squares or you can do the crochet version and there are three different yarn options so there's the Madeline Tosh blanket two different colorways, the romantic or the playful. I did the romantic. They're just like more muted, more subtle colors where the playful was much brighter and more playful, which they both were beautiful. And I had a hard time choosing to be honest, but I ended up going with the romantic. And then for people who do not, who are not able to tolerate wool because the Madeline Tosh blanket is 100% wool. There is a Barocco yarn choice that is hypoallergenic. So you just sign up and you get your delivery of your pattern online. It's like a dig, I think it's just comes digitally to everyone. That's how mine comes. And then you get your physical yarn in the mail and then everybody knits along. And then it seems to me that at some point in the game, probably at the end, we're going to seam them all together. So yeah, it's just been, it's been really fun and it's patchwork. It, I'll, I'll pop a picture and so you can see what the, 
what they look like. Just follow the link down below if you want to get a better look at the kits. Uh, from what I, through my correspondence with Jimmy Beans Wool, it is open. It's just open indefinitely, at least for a while. <laughs> so there's not a cutoff to sign up for the club. Okay, so now, now that we got that done, um, I want to show you, I want to talk about the two patterns that I'd really like to knit. The first one, I just saw Becky of A Hand Knit Letter. She talked about it on her podcast, and she had knit these, and they are called the Winglet Mitts, and they are by Sachiko Bergen, and uh, I'll put a picture up here for you. I think these are so, so adorable. I saw those and I immediately knew I needed them. I don't really need them. I wanted them. But I will say that there is a, we wear, Lily and I wear fingerless mitts. And there have been times when she's had friends over and they've worn the fingerless mitts that I've made. And I have made a mental note that I need to make more fingerless mitts so that when she has, when we have company over and they need a pair of fingerless mitts, I have extras <laughs> for them to borrow. Um, but these are just so cute. I love the little moth on them and um, just very nature inspired. Just, I just love, I fell in love with them and it, they take fingering weight yarn. I happen to have a whole basket of Knit Picks palette. I've had this for three years, maybe longer. I'm trying to remember. And I bought it when Knit Picks did a huge sell on their palette yarn. And I feel like they do that often, but this was like, I was getting, I got some of these colors for like a dollar something a skein. It was a steep discount on some of these colors. Others were like two or $3 a skein, but I have this basket and this thing is full of Knit Picks palette. So let me see if I can, I don't think I can, I cannot take this lid off totally, but I can kind of hold it up. Let me, okay. See? And this, this particular wool or this particular yarn, if you're not familiar with it, is a non superwash. It's hundred percent Peruvian Highland wool and it's 231 yards per 50 grams. And let me show you here. Like this one's called Douglas fur. Do you hear my dog snoring? She's laying beside me. This is really pretty bouquet Heather got the sun coming in, but Oh, Oh my, I think I might, I think I might use this one. The nice thing about this pattern is it uses 200 yards of fingering weight yard of fingering weight yarn. And this has 231 yards. So one of these balls is going to make myself a pair of, of fingerless mitts. And I am so excited about that. And I'm also thinking that these would be a perfect knit for the handmade knit along, make along that I'm kind of very loosely and not very well running because <laughs> it's, there's been a lot going on this year and I just, you know, anyway, I'll put the tag down below, but essentially what it is, is I was inspired last December because I got to the month of December and I thought, oh my gosh, if I would just knit one gift a month for the entire year of 2024, by the time I got to December, I would have a decent amount of handmade gifts made for people that I want to gift them to. And, uh, for me, that's going to probably be knitting, but for other people, it might be crocheting. Maybe it's embroidery. I don't know. It could be sewing. It doesn't matter. It's handmade. You could do whatever with that really, to be honest. So last month I made a headband and I, what was that headband called? Let me look back because I have it. I just talked about it not too long ago the Frida headband, which is a free pattern. And I knit that for my daughter and she is, she already has it. I didn't, but it would be, it would be good for a gift. Okay. So that is a good one. And then I feel like this winglet pattern would also be a good one. Okay guys, I got a phone call and anytime I, because I film on my phone, anytime my phone rings, let me adjust this here. It stops my recording, but I don't know it's not obvious where it's, when it stops the recording. So I'm not really sure where I left off until I go to edit. I'm not going to know. So I'm just going to, um, I was talking about the handmade make along 2024 gift along. I can't remember even what I hashtagged it as, but if you want to join along with that on Instagram, that would be great. 
it would be nice just to be able to see what everyone is knitting. I've been really horrible at updating on Instagram. I like I had to get off of it for a while because I had too much input into my head. <laughs> too much information. I just had to get off of it for a while. And then I got back on, but now it's very limited and I'm very guarded in how much time I spend on there. And I don't feel like I spent a ton of time on, but, um, yeah, so I haven't even posted any of my things on there, which it, it's not, I'm not going to beat myself up about it because as I've always said, my real life always trumps my online life. So it's fine. But, um, Having said all that, I think the winglet mitts, I think this pattern would be an awesome one to give as a gift because they are small, they're practical. In my opinion, they're practical. Maybe not everyone thinks they are, but I think they are. They're beautiful. They use a small amount of yarn. I mean, 200 yards is not much. And um, yeah, I, I think you could make like multiple. Look, this is really pretty too. This is brown sugar. I just have all different colors in here because basically I just bought a bunch because I thought I will eventually use it. I mean, I've had it for a long time and I haven't used any of it yet, but, um, Oh, that's, I love these honey yellow colors. What is that called? Serpentine. So yeah, anyway, that is the first project that I would that I plan on knitting very soon and the second one is a little bit unusual for me because I don't typically knit things for my home I have knit blankets and I've crocheted blankets but other than that well okay I guess I've done some washcloths I've done lots of washcloths and I have done some like pot holders um but that's pretty much that's pretty much it. However, I don't even know how I came across this pattern, but this is by Heidi and Lana and it is called hearth and it is this beautiful table runner. And I use table runners a lot. I usually, I don't really put them on our table because our table is a small round table and we use it so much. I don't have like a dining room. The table we have is where we eat at. So I just normally just have like a little wicker flat basket type thing that I will put some flowers on or, you know, just little knickknacky things. And then I can just lift the whole basket up and move it when we go to eat. So to have anything like just laying out there individually or to have a tablecloth or anything like that, it's really impractical for us here at our house because we use our table so much. However, I do use table runners on the coffee table. I use them on, I have a lot of dressers that I have around the, the house that I store various, like not just bedroom dressers. I have one in the entryway for all of our gloves and hats and stuff like that. I have one in my kitchen that holds candles and linen napkins and my essential oils. I have one in the living room that holds some of my knitting stuff, some vases. Like I have those all around and I like to put a table runner on them. And so I saw this pattern and I thought that is so beautiful. I actually really like the colors that Margaret knit this sample up in, although I want, to, I'm really trying to not buy yarn. I've been trying over the last two or three years to not buy a lot of yarn to just use up what I have. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use what I have to knit this. And then, um, I just feel like that's being responsible and <laughs> it'll feel good. It always feels good when you can use yarn that you already owned. Right? So anyway, that is a DK weight pattern. It uses DK weight yarn and it's knit on a size six needle us six needle. So I am excited to make that I don't know what colors I will choose yet. I thought about doing a more spring, summer colored one, but I don't know. I don't know. I have a lot of color in my house. If you guys have seen my Instagram account, which I always link below as well, I describe my decorating style as eclectic cottage. So my walls are all a, it's, it was a shade of white, but honestly, I feel like they have a bit of very light silvery blue in them. And so our entire house is painted in that color. And, um, except for the kids rooms, they have their own, they pick their own colors. 
and then our trim is white, our doors are white. I like to have that very white neutral background because I like color, but I'd like to be able to change color. So I have a lot of color in my house and a lot of them are blues, corals, greens, um, pinks, those kind of colors. And so I don't know what, how, I don't know what colors I want to make that runner in, but I do think that I will make like a solid for the main color, a solid off white color. And then I will do some sort of fun color for the other, like for the detail. But uh, yeah, that's, that's my plan. And then I also of course want to knit the Sonder sweater by the petite knitter. And I just need to get around to that. I think I think it's just been so weirdly nice here. And last time I filmed, I'm pretty certain I told you guys that the Mockingbirds came back, which was very unusual for February. They don't normally come back until, I don't know. I usually don't notice them until April. And last week I saw a Robin and I just, there's been, I've seen multiple Robins. It is weird. It is really weird. It is supposed to be in the 60s. It's been really warm here, very strange. Actually, it's been really sunny, which is also very strange because we usually have a lot of, the majority of our days in the winter are usually gray. So it has been so nice to have blue sky and to wake up multiple mornings and have the sun in the sky shining. It's just, it feels so good. Um, especially if like for me, I definitely struggle with seasonal affective disorder. So it is, uh, really good for me mentally to have these sunny days. Anyway, so that is, um, pretty much it. I did want to show you a quick little craft that Lily and my friend Danielle and I have worked on. We made little embroidered gift tags and I cannot seem to find mine, which is strange. Oh, there it is. Okay. So let me just show you. They're just craft paper tags. And then we punched in, like we drew our design and then we punched in holes using a thumbtack and then we embroidered. And then this is, this is an inside joke. We, our family has an inside joke about pineapples. So I had to make a pineapple, <laughs> had to make a pineapple tag. And then those were the only two I got done because we kind of got it started later in the day. And I had a meeting to go to that evening at our church. But Lily and Danielle stayed, they kept working on it after I left. So let me show you Lily's. I hope she doesn't mind. I didn't ask her, but I don't think she'll mind. I think they're so adorable. And they were just so fun and relaxing to do. I love this little pine tree. So yeah, if you have some, some craft gift tags and some embroidery thread, which I always scour the thrift stores for craft supplies of any kind. And if they're a good deal, I will buy them because I find that I'm probably going to at some point use them. And so I have so much embroidery thread from, I, I don't, I think almost all of the embroidery thread I have was purchased at thrift stores for extremely cheap prices. But yeah, we worked on those on, on Thursday, last Thursday. So that was fun. I actually didn't put the supplies away yet. They're still out in my kitchen because I want to make some more. So, um, the last thing I wanted to talk about real quick was I just wanted to thank you guys so much for all of your very kind and encouraging thoughts. My last two episodes, I have been in a weird mental space because, um, you know, I've been in going through a lot of testing to figure out what's going on with my heart. And I have, I've been finding more things out. I found, well, I knew I had mitral valve prolapse, but I recently just found out in January that I have another structural defect of my, um, mitral valve, which is not, there's really not a lot known about it. And so, and then I had a 30 day monitor and when I talked to you guys last, I don't believe I had any results back from that. But th since then I have gotten the results and I had multiple arrhythmias. And so, um, I see my cardiologist tomorrow just to discuss everything because my follow-up appointment wasn't until April 30th. And I told his nurse, listen, I am so anxious. I cannot wait until April 30th. I have so many questions. I've been taking I've been writing down questions. I have four pages of questions on my notes app in my phone. <laughs> By the way, guys, I was a registered nurse before I quit my job to homeschool. So a lot of that probably comes from that. And I also deal with fairly bad health anxiety. 
um, specifically things related to my heart. And so this has been like, this is like facing one of my worst fears, which, um, you know, I just keep, I'm glad, I'm so glad for my faith because that has been really what's kept me from completely losing my mind. But I have dealt with a lot of worst case scenario thinking. And, um, anyway, I have an appointment with my cardiologist tomorrow just so I can ask him all my questions. And then I see an electrophysiologist next week. That's what my cardiologist wanted me to do because of, um, I have a feeling because for several reasons, I have my, I have my opinions why he wants me. Um, one of the arrhythmias that showed was something that's more concerning. So I, I'm pretty sure that's why he wants me to see the EP, but I don't know. I'll ask him that tomorrow. Uh, in the meantime, I had to make the really hard decision of going on a beta blocker, which actually is supposed to help slow the heart rate and decrease the amount of, um, premature contractions. I had a lot of premature contractions. Um, so that's hard for me cause I, I, I do a lot. I live a very healthy lifestyle and I do try my best to, you know, I, I exercise, I eat as organic as I can. I eat a whole foods diet. It was hard for me to do the medication thing. Although I'm not sure if I'll stay on it. If, um, once I have more knowledge under my belt, after I talk to the electrophysiologist. So yeah. Um, so I'm pretty much still in that limbo space where I don't know what's completely what's going on, but I know more so what's going on. But but I did have to stop Googling. I was Googling and I literally was um, digging my grave in my mind. <laughs> I know some of you also deal with this. I know some of you also deal with health anxiety. And also the fact that when you Google, you get most of the time you get worse, the worst case scenarios. And with the, the one defect I have, because there's not much known about it, everything that was coming back were like medical case studies. And they were the ones that happened when there was like really bad stuff going on. Like, <laughs> so I was like, Amber, you, my problem is, is I like to know what's going on. I don't want to just blindly listen to a doctor and do what he says. I like to keep myself educated and to be able to make an informed decision. So I, when I Google, I do read like scientific studies and stuff, but even those can be scary. And most often they are scary. So anyway, um, yeah, that's what's going on. So thank you for your encouraging words. If any of you have experience with arrhythmias, heart arrhythmias of any kind, cause like I said, I had several, um, just, let me know. Cause you know, sometimes you just feel alone and that's what that makes it feel even scarier. I know that some arrhythmia, like PVCs and PACs and stuff. If you, if you know, if you know what I'm talking about, then you probably have them. Like they're very common and it's just like some of the other stuff. And in combination with the fact that I have like a structural defect, it's what makes me feel more nervous and scared. But, uh, God is in control. God is faithful and not, none of this is a surprise to him. And as I said, I think I said this last time, like all my days were already ordained for me. So I don't need to be worried. And then another scripture I have is who of you by being anxious can add a single hour to his span of life. <laughs> we can't, if anything, it just makes us more like, it just makes you miserable, you know? So it's a battle though. It is definitely a battle for me. Anyway, that is it. I, I don't, I hope I didn't end that on a depressing note. I didn't mean to do that. I just have had so many people reach out, um, in multiple ways, email comments, uh, you know, mailing me cards. So I just truly appreciate it. And I felt like I don't really want to talk about it cause I'm trying not to think about it too much. But at the same time, I was like, I don't want to just not mention it because I, have already told people about it. So I don't know if that makes any sense. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and for your comments and saying hello and all of your love and kind words. And, um, hopefully I will see you guys in a couple of weeks and I'm, I should have a Phoenix, a finished Felix pullover. And hopefully I have those winglet mitts and the Sonder pullover casted on and going. So, and if you want to find me, other places on the internet, you can check out down below. I have my Instagram link as well as my email and my Goodreads name is down there. I also have a co 
Ko-Fi account. Um, some of you make donations to that and some of you even make monthly donations. You guys don't even know how much I appreciate that. It is so much appreciated. And uh, yeah, that's all down below. So check that out if you're interested. And thank you guys so much for watching. And I will talk to you next time. Goodbye.